When you first see the new Toyota Prius, you'll notice that it looks a whole lot like the Honda Insight, especially from the side view. The two cars are almost identical in profile, but there's some key important differences. For example, there's much less of a plan view, that is, much less of a boat nose to the Prius compared to the Insight. It's got a much more blunt front end. Also, when I pointed out the aerodynamics of the inside, I noted that they had a seal on the leading edge of the hood to prevent air from going under the hood, make sure that it goes over the top of it. Toyota does the same thing, but it puts the seal, a rubber gasket, down on the fascia. They don't mount it up on the leading edge of the hood. Does the same thing, just interesting how they both chose to do it differently. Another thing that you'll notice down here on the front fascia is this, this styling line. I say styling, it might have some aerodynamic benefit, in that as the air breaks around the side, it keeps that attached flow as it goes down the side of the vehicle. And just like the Insight, the Prius is a very slab-sided vehicle, again, to maintain attached flow. At the very back in the front fascia, you'll see the same line that's carried up on the front. This is definitely for aerodynamics to provide a good breakaway point, separation point, so as the air comes off the end of the car, it doesn't, doesn't spin around. There's not as much turbulence. Also, Toyota is using this line on all its purpose-built hybrids. You're going to see this as a styling cue so that you get the idea this is a hybrid. And just like the Insight, very high uh, rear end to the car, keeping that up, of course, for aerodynamic reasons. It has a built-in spoiler to it, but because they keep this so high, the backlight is very shallow, really hard to see out of, and so like the Insight 2, they put in clear glass on the back of the vehicle so that you can see out. But I'm telling you, inside, it's, it's kind of weird looking out the back. Your visibility isn't all that good. Not bad, but not that good. Underneath the car, you'll notice that it's very flat. They do not have a full belly pan under there, but there are different shields along the way, both in the front and the rear of the car. Again, all with trying to get the air to flow as smoothly and as turbulent free as possible as it goes under the car. One last point to make on this from an aerodynamic standpoint. It's very subtle, but you'll see that the roof bows up and out above the passenger heads. It sinks down in the middle a bit. Why? Again, that's to present the least amount of frontal area to this car to give it the best possible aerodynamics.